Brawlhalla introduces its newest legend, Fate. World of Tanks mercenaries bust out a couple of mechs. Elsword releases the second job path for their newest playable character, and Valorite Royale readies itself for its official free-to-play launch. What's up guys, James Blonde here with a weekly recap for gaming news and announcements for the week of February 1st, 2019. And starting out the news this week, we've got some news around the free-to-play games on consoles. Starting with Warframe's Fortuna, the Profit Taker update, going live on both PlayStation 4 and Xbox One this past week. Gigantic Robot Spiders, new lore and exciting new missions await players in the new content, which will bring players face-to-face -face with one of Fortuna's biggest enemies, the Profit Taker. Your Arcwing will also gain a huge amount of firepower to do battle with this powerful foe. Other notable features include the ability to save new species of animals to earn floofs and a conservation badge, as well as a slew of new weapons and customizations that you can acquire through the shop. Also on console, the ghost town of Pripyat, I think that's how you say it, is coming to Warface on Xbox One. In the desolate remains of the city, players will encounter new enemies and new mechanics like energy shields for those enemies. Blackwood's robotics department has a frightening new creation known as Sed, a collection of powerful androids that will attack anyone brave enough to enter the area. This update also introduces a new weapon series referred to as the Nuclear Weapon Series. The new trailer you see playing here sums it up pretty well if you ask me. Branching off of last week's recap, Daybreak Games shows off a sneak preview of the upcoming map that's on its way with Planetside Arena, known as Echoes of Amorish. James Korowski, environmental artist, and Troy Schramm, senior designer, give a tour of the war-torn Echoes of Amorish map, as well as the new biomes and points of interest scattered around the terrain. During the tour, James and Troy showcase the new DirectX 11 enhancements that are utilized in Planetside Arena and Planetside 2 to ensure gameplay experience on both games are optimized. The Bastion Carrier that serves as the in-game lobby is also shown off in this video, where players can choose their class, loadout, and more before descending into battle. Planetside Arena launches its first closed beta on Wednesday, January 30th, which is this past Wednesday, and is available to all players. A special beta period will also be available to those who pre-order during Founder Season, which begins on February 20th. Next up, Fall Damage Studios announced the release date for their action strategy game Battleline this past week. The title is set to launch on February 21st, 2019, and the beta phase has been extended by a month to give more time for development. Said Anders Gillenberg, CEO of Fall Damage, we've been hard at work getting the game as polished and stable as we can. We set out to deliver three factions, nine heroes, and 54 units. And that's what we're going to do. The MMOS crew is pretty excited about this one. Keep an eye out at the site for the latest news as it becomes available. Well, it looks like the Gravity Inn is the first building in Elvenar that the community has designed together, and a video, the one you see playing here, has surfaced discussing it in detail. A poll determined the size, effect, and theme of the building, and then the Elvenar team brought the concept to life. This new 2x2 building provides culture and population, and it's themed around sorcerers and dragons. The building is also ultra rare, awarded only to very special players who engage with and help the community in meaningful ways. Tanks may be fun, but mechs are easily twice as cool, and they're here for a limited time in World of Tanks Mercenaries. Core mode is now available for a limited time in the console version of World of Tanks, and it throws players into a heated 4v4 mech battle between the US and Soviet Union. The US Iron Soldier and the USSR Steel Comrade battle across Old River City, unleashing a metric crap ton of missiles, lasers, and machine guns on each other and everything in their way. They'll be able to dive into this thrilling new mode from now until February 4th, this definitely reminds me of some of the holiday and April Fool's events Wargaming tends to do. Not saying that's a bad thing. Most of those seem like a blast, so this shouldn't be too far off. Also this past week, it was announced that PlayFusion and Games Workshop are coming together to bring the card game Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions to the Macs, PCs, and the Nintendo Switch. The game features a robust tutorial, AI to play practice against, and full narrative campaigns for each of the game's four grand alliances. The game has seen massive success in the physical space, selling over 20 million cards, and PlayFusion couldn't be more excited. 
The team is utterly thrilled to bring Warhammer champions to new audiences and new platforms. The response for both physical and digital games have been incredible, and we can't wait to grow to new heights," said Mark Jared, CEO of PlayFusion. This is pretty exciting for a company like that. Hopefully, it will open up new opportunities for them to grow. Next up, Brawlhalla Patch 3.36 launched this week, which introduced the newest legend, Fate. Fate is a powerful scythe and orb user with a cute cat riding on her head. Enough said. Brawlhalla is also celebrating their Winter 2019 Championships, during which time players can earn a Winter Shard 2019 avatar. This week's Brawl of the Week, Switchcraft, also proves to be a roaring good time. In this battle, players select three legends and watch as their weapons get scrambled up. Each stock is a different legend, and the first team of two to eliminate the opposing team completely wins. For a full breakdown of the patch 3.36, check out the site post with the link in the description below. On a slightly similar note, Elsword releases the second job path for Labby, their newest playable character this past week. Along with the release, there are ongoing events and in-game rewards running from now until February 12th. Rewards for these include things like mana elixirs, L tree fruit, dimension master accessories, and plenty more. And finally, for our last bit of news, Stunlock Studios has announced that it will officially launch Battlerite Royale on February 19th, 2019. The game has been in Steam Early Access program, and thanks to constant feedback from the community, it's finally ready to enter its full free-to-play launch. According to the official press release, as a hybrid between the MOBA and Battle Royale genres, Battle Royale offers an experience unlike anything players have seen before. Unless they've played another Battle Royale game, then I guess they've, they've seen it before. To commemorate the launch, Stunlock Studios promises a huge content update that will be announced in the coming weeks, along with a major update to the original Battle Ride that will release simultaneously. For a full breakdown of the game, check out Colton's video on MOH's YouTube channel. Anyway guys, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. For more information on the news topics, check the links in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news, even more news, in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers.